Anyway, welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown. As always, we are here on this beautiful Friday with our entertainment rundown. Uh, we are bringing back our guests who knows the most about entertainment, who has the fashion of a 1980s uh, kid Kardashian or whatever the person is. Mr. Michael Nichols Pate is back with us, our entertainment pundit. Michael, thank you. I'm like being read for filth and this hasn't even started yet. This is a crime against me. Crime against humanity is that brooch on your, on your lapel there, Mr. Uh, Um, She's giving you Agatha all along right now with this brooch. So how dare? More like Agatha. Oh no, you didn't with that brooch. (laughs) Um, rude. So. How are you? It's been uh, five days since we've last talked about the Emmys at 11 o'clock at night. And uh, here we are, Friday, and we are about to talk about the biggest fashion news stories of the year, which is... Just fashion. Surprise, you all got roped in. (laughs) Not going to happen. We're talking about it for like 20 minutes tops, and that's it. Which is Met Gala 2021. Theme for this year's Met Gala was Americana. Americana. So I'm not sure what the hell. Oh, no, it was America, a lexicon of fashion. It, Americana, it's a bougier. Yeah. That was the actual theme. America, a lexicon of fashion, which was just a fucking Americana, but bougier. So um, we have some hits and misses that we are going to be talking about. The And then we have a few that are, what the hell were they thinking? the sat on it awards and then we're going to be talking about things that i actually care about not fashion oh i am leaving goodbye welcome back hey i'll 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 step away for 20 minutes like you did in the last entertainment rundown and it was like three minutes look at this we're not even three minutes into this and we're already at each other's throats i can just imagine how well our Top five, well, your top five choices because I only had two that I want to talk about, and you have five. Let me, let me drink my tension tea. So, for those who are listening to, to this on the uh podcast audio version through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, and all those fun things, oh, and Amazon uh, Music as well now. Um, I would highly recommend you go over to YouTube because throughout the episode, we will be showing these outfits that we are talking about, or you can just Google them either way. It doesn't bother me. However you want to do this, but go over to YouTube while you're there, give us a like and subscribe because it helps our algorithm and makes us money. I didn't say that out loud. So Met Gala 2021, first initial thoughts, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate. Um, I didn't realize it was theme optional. Um, it was kind of a letdown this year. The whole thing was just kind of a big what the hell's going on. No one got the memo. No one realized it was avant-garde and just showed up in pretty dresses, which are fine, but that's not what the Met Gala is for. You're not here to be simple. You're here to be extravagant. You're here to be extra. You're here to be the avant-garde. And bitch didn't see it. It did not impress me. Um, well, I will be up front. I had never heard of the Met Gala prior to talking to Michael about it. So uh, when we were talking about it in our last entertainment rundown back in August, uh, my niece was here and she overheard the conversation. And after the taping, I went upstairs and she basically sat me down and we watched 2020s, 2019. 18 17 16 i think we got back all the way to 13 so i did what every person did during the pandemic i binged watched a something and mine was rupaul and the met gala um i don't like Uh, fashion i will be the first to admit i sat down i watched this Uh, michael and i were texting back and forth during the met gala live stream um i wasn't impressed the theme we're, we're of hating america, on everyone america well not everyone we we're going to talk about the the hits but 
the theme wasn't displayed in this year's um red no. carpet the staircase walk whatever they want to call it in the met gala anna winters still looked disgusting so she she still came out with her i don't know how to actually dress properly so good for her she is an icon how dare you she was in that oscar de la renta dress and she was giving us it yeah but it wasn't americana it was oscar de la renta that means absolutely nothing to me but it just didn't scream fashion and extravagant yeah she doesn't usually do avant-garde she wears a dress that like barely meets the fucking brief and then calls it a day and she's the one who is hosting this isn't she she is the host of she's well her her magazine is the one that she's the organizer so this is the thing with her. She organizes it and then steps away because the hosts were Timothy Chalamet, um, Amanda Gorman, Mia, brain is escaping me as it's been a long week. Um, and uh, Timothy Chalamet, Amanda Gorman, <laughs> Billie Eilish and Mia something. Okay, sure. I, I thought it was just Timothy Chalamet and the nope, other one, Amanda. There was four. That shows you how much I was paying attention. But as you said, there was controversy around this Met Gala even before it got underway. Usually, uh, typically, they are in May and March to begin with. But the big controversy, according to my niece, was they invited TikTok stars to the Met Gala this year, which traditionally they don't do. And there was a lot of celebrities who were up in arms. And that's not including the other controversy we're going to talk about later on. But... Uh, were you okay with the TikTok star TikTok stars showing up? I don't have a problem if anyone wants to show up. I mean, as long as we're raising money for the Met, whatever. But like, they were just so boring for the most part. Like, you you invited these TikTok people and they showed up in some basic ass. I bought it at the Dress Barn dresses, which Dress Barn's great, not for Met Gala. True. Um, so let's talk about the hits, the hits of the night, according to Michael Nichols paid. I will start first because I only have one hit of the night, one, one hit of the night. Uh, and that was Jennifer Hudson in the red dress that she was wearing. For those who are watching, as you can see on the screen, Jennifer Hudson to me blew it away. It was awesome. It was amazing. And I liked it. Uh, Michael is shaking his head for those people who are listening on the audio version. Why didn't you like it? It's not that I didn't, it's not that I didn't like it. It's very in the middle for me. Like it was a nice dress. It was a throwback to divine. It was Jersey material. So like, it was like this kind of knit material, which it's fine. It fit her well. It was pretty, but it was just boring. Like she could have worn that on like an Oscars red carpet and it would have been fine. She could have worn that to the Grammys and it would have been fine. I mean, I don't want to see something I can see on a normal red because you can't really wear avant-garde to some of these other red carpets, like these really extravagant things. She could have gone further. She could have come as uh, Aretha Franklin or in a more standard Aretha Franklin looking outfit. And I think I would have been enjoying it much more than I did. It just was safe. Oh, understandable. So you're giving it a safe. I'm giving it a like. So here we are. We are going to go through these things and we are going to basically give our critiques. And I will be honest, mine are going to be very harsh compared to Michael's. Um, let's start because I, I'm going to go in reverse order of the order that you gave me for the likes because I want to end on the one that I despised hate it oh my god let's start with billy eilish though miss billy miss billy from the block or whatever she is she so was fun fact go ahead she's wearing 30 pieces of cartier jewelry which is the most pieces of cartier jewelry ever worn on or at the met gala um i couldn't tell uh, I was watching. Yeah, I don't know where these 30 pieces were, but. <laughs> exactly. For those who are watching, uh, she looks like Marilyn Monroe to me. That I'm was what sure. she was going for. Is that what she was going for? Okay, well, I, I kind of liked it. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is the best thing since last bread. 
but you liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a great dress. I'm a sucker for a uh, super long train, which trains was like the trend of the season. Um, I also really just loved the blonde hair on her. Like get rid of the green and black thing that you do, Billie Eilish. I don't want to see it anymore. This blonde, fantastic. Um, I, I just think but it was- at the a, same time, I think you have to stick to your brand that you know, right? You stick to I the mean, brand that brought you. Cher and Madonna both change brands frequently and are still successful. Yeah, but Cher and Madonna were like around in the 30s. So let's be honest, they've been around for 100 <laughs> years and they're fucking- The like, 1830s? They, <laughs> exactly. And they freaking go through freaking wardrobes like they go through men every week. You leave Miss Cher alone. I will hear no slander of Cher. But Madonna, okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. If you want to slander her. Uh, let's go. It. Let's go with um, Miss Aman. If am I pronouncing that Iman. right? Supermodel of the world, Aman. Yes. Sure. I've never heard of her until you pointed her out. So this shows you much. Um, she is giving some like uh, like pussy willow vibe here in her big headdress. Of I feel like I can pick her up and blow her like the sunflowers that turn into those little white puffy things. She is giving you the American wheat fields. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's what it looks like. And that's what it first was. And then I was like, she kind of looks like the sun. I wonder if she's giving like some ray of hope or some bullshit like that. And then in, an, in one, because they'll do like quick little interviews as they walk in. And she's like, yeah, I'm the ray of sun. I'm hope and I'm joy. And I'm like, oh, I got it. I loved this. I think this was the level that everyone needed to come with was this extravagance. Like this is giving me a story. It's giving me a moment. Like it's giving me a period in time of joy. And this is what, this is what I wanted from the Met Gala was more like Iman. Um, and for those of you that don't know Iman, she is a very well-known superstar, supermodel. Think Naomi um, Campbell, Tyra Banks. Um, I know that one. She's that she, has a, she has a star. She, she, has a, she has a TV show. America's Next Top Model, where they did blackface for like hmm, 10 years in a row. Awkward. Yeah, that didn't age well, Tyra. Awkward. Let's go to Lu Lupita Nyong'o. Nyong Nyong'o. Nyong um, for those who don't know, uh, this is basically what Michael is wearing right now. Denim. This is not what I'm wearing right now. I'm not wearing, well... You know what? I'll take it. She looked fabulous in this outfit. The hair was very like cover of Vogue, cover of L. The the dress was really well constructed. It was really well fitted to her. There was a lot of people that showed up to this red carpet, clearly not having their dress fitted because they were falling down. Taraji P. Henson, I am looking at you, girl. I saw your entire ass on that carpet, and I don't think it was intentional. Um, but Lupita looked great this whole outfit was a slam dunk like this is this is cover material like that was so stunning in the denim what's more american than a denim anything not denim <laughs> denim is a very american style um i just want to make sure i'm I, I, you, you literally only put two words for this next one because two letters for this one so i don't know if this is a man or a woman because i was trying it's to find woman. it okay cl yes cl okay she looked good okay so let's talk about <laughs> this because, because i have tried to find this cl and for those who are watching this right now you're going to see it right here but it took me about two days to find this photo because I couldn't find it left, right, and center. So, Miss CL, why did you like this? Um, she was a literal pair of denim pants. Like, when I first looked at it, I'm like, what is this? I kind of like it, I don't know. But she has on, like, she's like a pair of denim pants. The sleeves are the legs. And then, like, the rest of the dress is um, just, like, the actual denim pant. And then it's cut open in such a way that she's wearing this like oversized underwear that she is like as a bottom. And that is like the underwear of the pant. It was so cool. And like, it's, this is 
a story. This is a journey. This is a moment. This is avant-garde. This is the Met Gala. If it's the one I'm looking at right now, I don't like it. Well, shocker. Groundbreaking. <laughs> but that's just me. I don't think den denim should only stay in one place, and that is your jeans, and that is only the only place it should be on your That was a read. For those of you who did not pick up because I'm wearing a denim jacket because he's hateful. <laughs> denim is good. Denim is good on your jeans. That is all. That's all I'm saying. And you love me or hate me, but holy crap, I have bags under my eyes today. Holy That's karma for hating on my jacket. That's called having a proper skincare routine. That is called washing your face. And that is it. Having bags under your eyes is called oh. washing your face. I don't know. Just <laughs> I'm exhausted. I was up until three o'clock last night. Election night was uh, Monday night, so I was up late. I was I was watching, I was covering it, I was watching the results. Because, you know, we Canadians can actually take a day to actually count our votes, unlike some people. Um, I don't love how hard you're reading the United States of America right now. Specifically Nevada. They needed a lot of people. They can only count to 10. Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia... New York. You missed my funny joke. Oh, I got or you it. ignored it. I ignored it. I moved on. Unlike You're a lot of your so like, hateful. Like a lot of your jokes, they go right by me because I'm just like he is so 1980s vibe right now. Maybe in 10 years I'll catch it because as you said at the beginning of the show, us Canadians like to copy American style 20 years later. So you you started this beef, girl. You started this beef. Are you literally trying to get me dragged by the entirety of Canada right now? Because that's what it sounds like. Hey, people already hate you for not liking Jim Carrey. <laughs> Wait, do they really? Yeah, I got, I got hate mail. No, you didn't. Yeah, I got one. I'll send it to you. Great. Love that for me. <laughs> Entertainment person who doesn't like Jim Carrey. Good job. Way, way to know your You don't like there. fashion. Yeah, well, that's that's like 90% of like the world. Um, let's talk about the worst fashion choice of the night, in my opinion. Incorrect. Incorrect. Mr. Gay C-3PO himself, little, little Nas X. Lil Nas. Li Lil Nas X. Little, little, uh, Lil, it's not even little, it's Lil. It's Lil. Lil. Li Lil Like Nas Lil Wayne. Lil, yeah, oh, that's just, yeah, no. Lil, Lil Nas X, Mr. I'm wearing three things. I'm wearing gay C-3PO. Hey, the SNL called. They want their skit back because they did it in the 90s. Talk about fashion 10 years ago. You like this. You like this. You like I, this, this, this transformation. Was gala. This was a story. I mean, he came out and he talked about how when he had the giant coat on, it was, um, or not coat, it was a cape. I'm fucking drunk. When he had the giant coat on or cape on, he was um, like hot shielding himself, protecting himself, you know, not having come out and taking it out, taking it off, revealing in the armor, like when he first came out and he was needing to protect himself from all the homophobia and all of the hate that he was getting as a young black queer male. And then finally taking the armor off and just being able to live and be happy and joyful in his own skin, which was that um, mesh, that golden meshed bodysuit. Um, that was everything, the whole moment. It was what the Met Gala is. Like this was 2019 camp, Billy Porter being carried in by six dudes on one of those like Egyptian what are they called? Couches. This was Rihanna in the Pope outfit. Like this was the moment. This is exactly what the Met Gala needed to be. And I will hear no slander from you, Chris Brown, regarding Lil Nas. Thank you. It's, it's not Lil Nas. It's Lil Nas X. You have to, why yeah. do people forget his next? We have to identify his full name here, people. Full name. Full name, Lil Nas X. Or I will still hear no or, slander. 
Or for those people who are paying attention, Little Nos 10, because let's be honest, X is 10. In that's, that's not the vibe we're going for. And for so someone no. who is a history major, <laughs> the couch that the Egyptians used to bring people in, <laughs> like, girl, go on. I'm getting very much, I'm being personally attacked right now. Would you like to with derobe your denim jacket so you can feel like little Nos 10? No, it looks good. Huh? So I'm going to keep it on. It does. Thank you. It does. So let's talk about the hits. The, we talked about the hits. Let's talk about the misses now. The misses, the misses, the misses, and not just the misses in that. But let's talk, let's go in reverse order again because we got we, we to gotta beat the dead horse last. Uh, <laughs> Miss, uh, Mr. Uh, Troy Savan. This was so boring. Like he thought he was doing something. He thought he was groundbreaking. Like I'm going to wear a dress, not realizing people were going to wear a dress and do it better than him. And then well, when asked about it, he was like, America's black and simple. And I like leather. So I wore a leather armband. I'm like, dude, who hired this kid? Harry Styles called. They want their fashion back from like two years ago. That's all I thought. It was just boring. It just wasn't groundbreaking. It was just, this, I mean, and then I was on a, I was talking to another friend and he goes, yo, he looks like Princess Diana. Hey, it's better than the fashion that Princess Diana wore to the Emmys this year. <laughs> you leave Emma Corrin in her swimsuit alone. I have no idea. No, I agree. That was bad. Um, let's talk about Kim Cuddy for a second. Kid Cuddy? Kid, Kim Cuddy, Kid Cuddy, sure. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, wait, are we mixing two people up here? I'm confused. Kim Kardashian and Kid Cuddy? Yeah, <laughs> Kid Cuddy. Um, green hair, oversized pants. Don't know what they were all about, but they were this Louis one, Vuitton. Well, it looks bad. And then well, the, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Louis, Louis Vuitton just looks bad then. Have you not seen their recent stuff? I'm dragging uh, Louis Vuitton. I should not be doing this. <laughs> my my husband worships at the house of Vuitton, so I don't know, but he says it's great. I if that's Louis Vuitton, then I don't know what the hell he's doing because that looks bad. And this blue sweater, what is this all about? It just was not the moment. And like yeah. I I just, this was a huge miss. Like I didn't get it. I didn't like it. I mean, if there's context and you understand, you please message me on Instagram. Say like, this is the context. You missed it. I'll happily admit if I missed the context of this, I just don't like it. It just was, I mean, he was comfortable at least. It's a long night. Good to be comfortable. That's the positive thing I can say. Is is it though? Is it? (laughs) Is it comfortable? Like that just, that just looks scratchy to me. Like, you know, those wool sweaters that your grandmother used to knit you when you were a kid and you'd get it for Christmas and you'd have to wear it because your mom said, well, your grandma's going to be here. So you get it better, go put it on. And then you'd put it on and it would be the worst scratching sweater ever. I apologize to my grandmother. She never knitted me one of these, but I've heard stories that people used to get sweaters from their grandmother and it would be itchy. This, this is what I saw. When I saw that blue sweater, I was like, what is this? I feel like he underneath he's scratching his body so hard because it looks so uncomfortable. Ugh. Anyway, Miss Sierra? Sierra, you got it. What, what? Um, the 1930s jersey called and they want their green back because that green was ugly. It's apparently representing her like husband who's a football player because it's his number and it's his team's color or something. I don't know. I just was not vibing. Well, (laughs) if, if they're, if her husband's is the Seahawks, that's the only green. Yes. Well, I don't think that is the green that the Seahawks use because I know the Seahawks and that is not the Seahawks green. That was just a bad, bad, this is a bad color. Bad color. She went neon. I mean, it's supposed to be Seahawks green. I, well, it's supposed to be Seahawks because of her husband and his number and the blah, blah, blah. Boring. I was bored. I mean, it had the cutouts. That's nothing more American than cutouts, I guess. I kept hearing that all night. Um, I don't know. I just was like, 
<laughs> it just was not cute for me. Um, I <clears throat> the next one is the only man on the misses list. Actually, the second man, but the only one who wore tux. Why is Channing Tatum a miss to you? Because I currently personally have beef with just Channing Tatum, but I don't necessarily like any of the men that wore basic ass tux. Um, Channing Tatum was just the one that I was most offended by because it fit the worst. Okay. It was baggy. It was baggy in the pant. Um, I mean, it was really bunching up. Like he needed it tailored better. Like, and you were going to wear a a boring ass three-piece suit to the Met Gala. Like, James Corden almost made this slot, but Channing Tatum's fit worse than James Corden's did. So, like, don't bore me at the Met Gala. I don't know what's going on, people. Oversized, didn't fit well. Just a three-piece suit. It reminds. There's me a of difference so- between. There's a difference between what Elliot Page wore, which was paying homage to Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde Channing was Tatum. about colorful suits, not Bef- pure black. Before, I don't even know where I was going because you just threw me off trying to hate on Elliot Page. I didn't hate Elliot Pages because it was hate an it. actual hate reason. It. Hate this. It. I did not like, I think it just, and there's a difference between intentionally oversized and whoops, I just forgot to go to the tailor one final time oversized. To my there listeners. Was nothing intentional. To my listeners and to my viewers, please send us your comments and uh, comments. We, we have Elliot Page, Channing Tatum, and uh, James Gordon all up on the screen right now. Who wore it best? Who wore it best? Let us know. And then in October's Entertainment Rundown, either Michael or I will be completely wrong. I think out of the three of them, Elliot was the worst, then Shannon, and then James Corden. That's my opinion. Yours? What's yours? Out of the three of them, out of the three of them, who wore it the best, who wore it the worst? Uh, Channing Tatum's is the worst because it's not intentional. And that's something you have to keep in mind. It has to be an intentional oversizing. So How do you it's know it not. Wasn't? Inten- How do you know it wasn't? Because I don't think he put that much thought into it. I literally think he just went and said, "I'm here. Look at I'm wearing like boring." I did not. I listen. James was just boring. It fit well. It probably is going to get the most likes. Um, honestly, it fit well. It just was boring. Like I don't want to be bored at the Met Gala. And then I think Elliot Page was the best of the three because I think Elliot Page's was intentional. I think it was nice. I really, I did like it. It just wasn't groundbreaking. Um, Let's talk about one thing for a second before we move on. How many horses were killed in preparation for the Met Gala for 2021? What, What the hell was she thinking? Miss Kim, Kim Petra. Like, honestly, her name is PETA. There's literally PETA in the freaking name. Why the hell is freaking she wearing a horse head? Who's going to tell him? It was Petrus, not P- Petra. Peter. But the letters PETA is in it. Well, literally, you could you could say that about Peter, like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I would make oh that. Oh my god! Oh my Jesus! I would jump to that conclusion, like Donald Trump jumped to the conclusion that you guy he still won the election. But what? Uh, what my, the, go ahead. No, the better question is how much ivermectin did she have to take to get in? What was going on? What, like listen who who, it was, who's, who took to, who who went to her and said you know what best idea ever what we're gonna Kim do Petras did this was her journey her idea I know but I'm saying who went to her and said you know what that looks amazing you my friend fabulous 
what we need even worse, what would have made it better is if she came in with little horse hoofs and then it would have fucking sold the whole thing. But she didn't like she she launched. She did not land the fucking plane. Wait, that horse hoof <laughs> thing might have made it iconic. Um, <laughs> no, I think what needed to be, I think. That or there a was tail a- on her ponytail. I think there was a taste level here that was missing. I think it almost hit the mark for me because Kim Petras is giving it for all the horse girls. That's what she said. And if she had taken the horse's head off of her breasts and instead maybe wore it as a purse, I think it would have been a slam dunk for me. I think the horse head was the issue for me and why it was one of the worst of the night. Um, I just... Like there was just, it, it just needed a lot, something. Cause it, it was. Well, it wasn't even the fact, like if people are watching right now. They see it's not even a full horse's head. It's like they went, I'm going to take your mouth, cut it off and just put the top of your head on, on my breast. Like there was no follow through on here. She could have like, <sighs> Like I said, I think it would have been better as a purse and just let the dress be with the hair and then the makeup look really good. In her and then crotch. do a hoof as a shoe. In her crotch would have been better. Like no, she has got no. She has a poofy ass. So there's the back of the horse. Wear the freaking uh, hoofs in your on as your shoes. It just. It, I don't think the it just the, like the purse would have it would have looked even worse with a purse in my opinion. I wonder if she worked with the designer and said this is what I want it to do and the because this is where it's like whose fault is this? Is this Kim Petras being like no this is what I want or is this the designer being like oh no this is like the moment we need to have because like something needed to be different. It neither needed the head as the purse or she needed four hooves and she needed to be more horse like. Outfit, I just this there was there was a missing element. Yeah, and I don't know what that missing element was. I just I, I'm flat. Taste. <laughs> snap snap. Okay. We sat on it. We are two weeks away for two weeks after this uh beautiful Met Gala. We have looked at the dresses. We have seen the tuxes. We have seen the gay C-3PO's come in and march down up the staircase. Who were the two for you that you sat on? You went, okay, I I, I liked it at that moment, but now looking back on it, I fucking hated it. Oh, I did it. I did... um... One that I hated that I liked, and then one that I liked that I now hate. Okay, so let's talk about the one that you liked then, but now you you look back and you go, what the hell were they thinking? Emily Blunt. See, I was hoping you were going to say the other one. So I liked Emily Blunt. I like Emily Blunt to begin with. I think Emily Blunt is a fantastic actress, and she can do no wrong. And she did no wrong with that Met Gala look. This is my issue. I liked it. And I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. It looks so good on her. And then I kept seeing it and I'm like, okay, this is simple. Okay, this is very simple. And then like everyone was like, oh my God, she looks so good. She hit it out of the park. And I'm like, no, she didn't. It's a pretty dress. If she wore it to like a regular red carpet, I think I'd be just as in love with it. But I'm like, what's avant-garde about it? What is groundbreaking about it? She wore a simple dress and she put some of those party city like stars on the the string that you can get as like a headband and called it a day. And it like, it just was boring. And I really, because I love Emily Blunt. Like I love her as an actress. I love her as a human. I just feel like this was a miss. Like, where was the avant-garde? Where was the journey? Where was the moment? Where was my excitement? Because it quickly left after I was like, this is the Met Gala, not just a regular red carpet. I was just bored by it. Sorry. Hey, to each their own. To each their own. I won't hold your judgment against you, unlike you holding it against me for your jean jacket. I don't know why. I don't know why. Because you you keep bringing it up. 
you're being very hateful towards me. I'm getting a vibe. Do we, do we need to pause the recording to talk about our feelings? No, I'll just talk about it with my therapist later. Okay, you can charge you can charge Miranda Brown and Associates your therapy fees. Okay, we'll write it off because we- Wait, I can? Fun. Even better. <laughs> um, so this one then is the one that you hated the night of and then you looked at it over and you looked at it over and you looked at it over again and you went, okay. Maybe I can see where she's coming from. And that is Nikki DeJagger. I did not get it when I first saw it. And I'm like, mm, I don't like this. This is whatever. Like scroll right past. Like it, she wasn't even appearing on my, on e, e. I was watching E when I was watching the Mac, Mac Ella. She didn't even appear on E. I was scrolling through the Vogue and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And scrolled right past it. And then as I kept looking through and looking through, um, because shameless plug i was on another podcast the block talk which is available where all po fine podcasts are found where we discussed all 170 plus outfits from the met gala um, and as i was doing research for that as for that very long podcast uh i finally i was looking at it and i'm like oh my god she's marcia p johnson that's the, that's the reference. That's the moment. And I really, as I was looking at it, I'm like, this is really well executed. I really like the dress. I really like her makeup. At first, when I initially saw it, I'm like, yeah, it's just another basic dress. But then as I was looking into it more, I'm like, this is actually really awesome. This is a really great reference. This is a really cool like piece of American history, specifically trans and queer American history. Um, so I, I had to, I, I changed my mind fully on it. Like, you know what? This is kind of a moment. Earlier this week, you and I had sat down at 11 o'clock at night and it might've been tiredness. It might've been because we are overly exhausted, but we had our hits and misses and the say what's of the Emmy dresses. I saw this photo and I thought to myself, okay, I, okay, maybe it maybe. Are you about like to it. compare this to 80 Bryant? I certainly am. This is not the same dress. This is not the same caliber. This is not the same. It may not be point. the same caliber, but it's the same kind of thing. It is like, not the same reference point. Then, okay, not the same reference point, but it's literally the same thing. Okay, I have a dress. I put flowers on it. There we go. You don't like, is it because she's a bigger woman? Now, you know, that's not true. Let's not throw that out there because that's definitely not the case, period. So I what just was, didn't like the dress. I, I, I just I, didn't I, I think it at worked the, on 80 I, Bryant. I, I, I and saw Nikki DeJager is a bigger woman too. So that falls apart. Thank you. So I, 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 I look at I, both of them though, because if for those who are watching, they're both on the screen right now. You can see... While they are not the same dress, it just, it, I, just, to me, it just, it, I don't know, like, maybe it's execution, maybe it's me not knowing the history around the issue, but to me, it's, they just look relatively similar and they're in the same area of fashion. They got flowers. I just and didn't like it. I don't know. It just, it, Aidy Bryant's looks a little off the rack to me and Nikki's doesn't. Aidy Bryant's is just a specific, it's not a specific reference point. I think if this, without the context, I may be a little more meh about Nikki's dress, but I think because it's a specific reference and a specific homage and a specific picture of Marsha P. Johnson that she is referencing, that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the color also of Aidy Bryant's dress. I don't like that this earthen, color. The earthen brown, I didn't like it. Or is that green? I'm colorblind with greens and browns. So I think it's brown. I could be wrong as well. Um, I I I look at this and I just didn't didn't didn't. I I, I again I could be completely wrong. I just I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, they look this and then again for those who are listening. Michael and I are joking and we're having a good time and we're shooting the shit with each other because that's what this podcast is about. Um, I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm not saying because Aidy Bryant's a bigger woman. 
please don't send your hate mail because I already get enough already from the political talk that I do. I don't need it for the entertainment one. I was making a joke. I want everyone to know that right now. <laughs> okay. So, how are you? I'm lovely. So I'm being attacked, but I'm lovely. Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Draco Malfoy walk into the Met Gala. Who's chasing them? The Dementors with Kim Kardashian West. What the hell was this all about? <laughs> I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand. Kimberly, baby girl, what is you doing? <laughs> I, like, I, I I saw it. I got, that's literally all I could picture was the Dementors. And I, I, was, I was on Twitter during the Met Gala and I was reading. And what I heard, I think, I, I think you and I even texted this might have been, and I might have actually been you who said this. Um, Kim is in her apartment right now, just relaxing, and her body double is at the Met Gala walking the carpet. She was just too lazy to get off her ass to go do the Met Gala this year. So she was like, go in my place and put this hood on. I want to know what's under the hood. Like, did she actually do her makeup? Did she not? Did she just not eat the whole night? Like, it's a long night, girl. You're not going to eat or drink anything. That was a that I don't get it. I just don't get it. She looked like a damn Harry Potter villain. She certainly did. I mean, um, that's not any new for her. No, exactly. But hey, Kim Kardashian, quote unquote, West, good for you. Good for you for trying. You tried. Do we actually think they're divorced? <laughs> like, real pause. Real pause, real sip in the tea. Um, like, I do th- we actually think they're divorced? Because this is now, this was twice in the same week that her and Kanye wore the same exact like fully covered up black hooded moment thing. I'm going to say to you the exact same thing I said when Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez got back together. It wasn't that big of an issue when they got married. I'm not caring if they're divorced. I don't really, I'm just curious, like inquiring do, do, uh, minds want to Inquiring know. minds, I, I think the Kardashians are all about the PR. I think- Well, that's a fact. I think Caitlyn Jenner has taken the Kardashian name and has, are you drinking? Oh, I thought you were drinking beer. I was like, it's freaking four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> like, wow. It's 6.06 is... where oh, I true. am. <laughs> Not come for me. That's it's five true. o'clock somewhere. And and there's past five o'clock here. So, but no, I'm drinking uh, a soda. I think Caitlyn Jenner has taken the Kardashians and sort of thrown it. Uh, uh, their like their brand and their reputation out the window for a while. So, I think with Caitlyn Jenner then at the time running for governor of California, which she got like two percent in the recall vote, good for her. Uh, I think Kardashians needed some PR for themselves because people were talking about Caitlyn Jenner instead of Kim. That's why I think they're getting quote unquote divorced. I don't know. I just am curious. Well, Did he sleep with Jeffree Star? Oh, wow. Well, I don't know who that person is, so I'm going to say sure. That <laughs> Kanye, if you want to come on the show, Kim Kardashian, if you want to come on the show, we have a seat in our October rundown. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to shoot the shit and dish on the dirt that is your marriage and your life. No, no. Okay, I thought you were going to hold up your Pepsi as well, but I guess not. Okay, thanks. Oh, sorry. You were doing. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we'll have an utter good time. <laughs> oh, wait. I love this mug. It's from Vermont. It sure <laughs> Where, is. You can see it inside the little thing. Yeah, we can go leaf peeping in Vermont while we talk about your marriage, Kim. So let's do it. I'm down. Last but not least is the what the hell were they thinking? And we talked about Kim already, but Miss Haley Steinfeld. Steinfeld. I know. I'm looking at this right now and I'm going, what? what is going on? I hate like, this. Like, are you a snowflake? Are you a sunflower? What are you trying to accomplish with Americana here? Like, it, 
I don't get it. I like, this is another one. I just don't get it. And I just don't like it. And it's like very abrasive and it's like very aggressive. And like, it almost looks like, cause of the new, it's all nude illusions. So I don't know if she's trying to go for like, look at these, like that's supposed to look like body um, alterations or modific modifications, that's the word. Like, is she trying to look like, look at my body modifications and we're going on some futuristic journey? Is she plugging Dune like half the people at the Met Gala seem to be doing when asked what their reference was? Oh, it's to Dune. Like, great. Like, so why? It <laughs> Haley Steinfeld had the perfect opportunity to win over the hearts and minds of nerds across America and around the world. She could have. She won. chose violence. She did. She is the. She is. Uh, um, I forget her first name, but Bishop in the new Hawkeye Disney Plus Marvel TV show. I hate Bishop. Kate, Kate Bishop, thank you. My mind is uh, hurting right now. Um, so she could have done something Captain America. She could have done something Hawkeye. She could have done something Marvel. But she chose violence. Pitch Perfect 3 called. They want their $3.50 back for that movie because this looks bad. $3.50. That's how much I paid at the drive-in for it. What? I paid like twenty bucks to go see that movie. Mm, well, you 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 got ripped off. The best part. I of that sure movie, did. The best part of that I movie sure was did. George Michael's. <laughs> okay. Wow, we got to talk about that. So, with that, Meg Gala twenty twenty one in the books. Final thoughts on it. Meh. Better than 2019? No. 20, better than 2020? 2020 didn't happen. So yes, better than 2020? Yeah. <laughs> so much better than 2020. Oh my God, what a groundbreaking Met so Gala I, this was compared to 2020. So are they back in May in 2022? Or are they going to continue? I believe so. No, so, I and also this one, I think the theme got 20, the two was the 20 anniversary of uh 9 11 and so that coming off that weekend. So I think it was very much inspired by all of the fashion week events were American themed and all of the like VMAs were American themed, like everything this that weekend was America themed. And so I think that's what really inspired the theme. But it is back in May, we have not heard. Yet, yes. what it is going to be yes, the theme, we do. or have we? <gasps> What's we have. the theme? What's the theme? It is a two-parter theme from 2021. Oh, no. In May, May 2nd, 2022, barring any seventh wave of the pandemic, the theme for the 2022 Met Gala is, in America, No, an, an anthology of fashion. No. So for those who are wondering, the four hosts of this season, because I've literally just Googled it on the side of me, was Timothy Chalamet, Billie Eilish, uh, Amanda Gorman, and Naomi Osaka. Osaka? Osaka. That's what it was. Why did I say Nia? I don't know. And then Tom Ford, uh, Adam Misery. The honorary chairs were Tom Ford, Anna Winters, and Adam Masoria, Masor Masseri, Moschino, Masseri, M O S S E R I. Oh, Masseri. Sure, sure. And the sponsor for the 2021 Met Gala was Instagram. That's why TikTok was there. And the headline performer was none other than Canadian legend Stratford own Mr. Justin Bieber. That's really there. Really American there, Anna Winters. <laughs> Could you have gotten at least an American headliner or did you have um, to go with technically, the Canadian? Technically, Canada is in North America. 
Yeah, but it's not the in Amer in North America in a lexicon of fashion. It's in America. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm so, just saying Canada counts, I guess. Allegedly. I guess, I guess so. So May 2nd, 2022, in America, an anthology of fashion is going to be our theme. <clears throat> sure. That's all I can say. Um so, with Met Gala out of the way, let's turn to the other big news stories of the entertainment world in the last 30 days, and that is movies, movies, movies. Uh, last time we left off, we were heading into September. Pandemic restrictions were lifting. People were heading back to the movie theaters. And one of the biggest new movies that people were anticipating outside of... Uh, Dune, which is coming up in October, was Shang-Chi, Legends of the Ten Rings, Marvel's first movie that was exclusively released in movie theaters. Uh, this was the test of the movie theaters uh, comeback, if uh, they were even going to be a thing moving forward, or if they were going to strictly release things in the movie theater slash online streaming. Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi did amazing in movie theaters almost a billion dollars in sales um i have not seen it yet i'm still waiting for it to come out in streaming services but i've heard good reviews what are your thoughts about the movie theater I industry i haven't seen it yet either and it's a shame he's already been canceled what oh you haven't seen this yet what happened? There's Reddit, po there's Reddit posts from 2015 that he made where he basically compared being queer with being a pedophile. Girl. Yeah. I, I and there's like, not, and like, and like, I get it, you know, things change, you, you grow, you learn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But like, there's not even been a half-assed apology yet from him. Wow. Or even like a publicist apology from him. So I'm like, what's going on with you, Simu? Simu Lee, again, another Canadian. So sorry about that quick interruption there. We had some technical difficulties with our audio. So we are back live again. Um, we are talking about movies. We are just talking about uh, uh, some uh, old uh, posts that the lead actor in Shang-Chi had posted on Reddit, supposedly. He has not come out and denied them or confirmed them yet. So I just want to make sure about that. Um, but let's talk about some of the other movies that have come out this month, including, and I have only seen a few of these, so this is going to be a sure. really short list. The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Mr. Potential Oscar nominee for Jessica uh, Chastain. 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 I need need to see this this weekend was way too busy for me i had a million and a half things to do and i did not get to see it yet and i need to it is like number one on my list right now um come from away the award uh winning tony broad uh, broadway show for apple was released it was a movie uh come from away is the canadian's storytelling of the 9-11 attacks of Gander, Newfoundland, where some planes were diverted and how Canadians uh, opened up their doors to our American brothers and sisters when they were in a time of need. So I watched it. I was, I, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite Broadway musical turned into a, a movie, but it was better than Hamilton. Well, they filmed this, they, they was the staged filming, right? Yeah, it's like the Hamilton's showing, right? I love that show. I've seen it many times um, live. And so this wasn't necessarily like a priority for me to watch because I've seen it so many times actually live. Uh, it's a great show. I will, I'm a little saddened to hear that you didn't love it as much. Um, I do hope that you can see it live because it really just hits so powerfully. Well, when I'm in New York next, we will go see it live, okay? If it's still on the uh, uh, I think the other so. one that The other one that I want to talk about is everyone's talking about Jamie. <gasps> it was so much fun. So uh, for those who don't know, this is a British, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a British musical Broadway show? Yes, it was West End. West End. So... Uh, 
they turned it into a movie because I think Hollywood has run out of ideas during COVID. So they've started turning everything that was on Broadway into a musical, which we're going to talk about another one in a few seconds here. Um, Richard Grant, he is a well-known, respected Academy Award nominee actor, was in the movie. I liked him. He was my favorite part. I didn't like the rest you, of the movie. You didn't like the movie? I didn't. I didn't. My I, heart is hurting. Michael texted me after he had finished watching it and he said, you have to watch it. And I said, well, I, I, I might, I might. And then I was like, okay, I'll watch it. I watched it. Did not like it. I will say Jamie was kind of an asshole. Mm -hmm. I will say that I'll fully admit Jamie was kind of an asshole. I did like that they didn't do the overplayed trope of gay kid falls in love with his bully and the bully is gay too and they all end up happily ever after because like that's not overdone and that's not realistic. One of my, uh, this is the diverting, but this is the great thing about my show. I can talk about what I want to fucking talk about. Uh, sure. My favorite, my favorite British LGBT related uh, film is Get Real. I don't know that one. You have to watch it. For those who haven't, it is a interesting story. It is the high school. It is the very first movie I saw when I was I, I started coming out and not started coming out when I came out to myself. Uh, I I borrowed it from the internet and I returned it right away. Uh, and I can tell you that it is that stereotypical trope of gay guy comes out, falls in love with his bully, his bully turns out to be gay, and here we are. But I enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it. That came out in the early 2000s. Find it, download it, borrow it from the TV, from the DVD library, and go do that thing. I'm not even going to tell you my first gay movie I ever saw. What is it? Birdcage? No. What is, oh, porn? <laughs> no. Bear, Bear City. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was no, fun. No, 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 no comments. But back um, to everybody who loves Jamie. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a rousing good time. I for those, hated for the those, principal. For those who haven't seen it, you can, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can go to Amazon Prime and down, uh, watch it right now. I would highly recommend it. It was fun. Um, sticking on the topic of Hollywood is so bored of ideas that they can't come up with one unless it's a Marvel movie or a Broadway show. Every, uh, let's talk about Dear Evan Hansen that is coming out literally last night. Um, ben Platt, God bless him, looks like a 90 year old bo uh, man in this movie. He is supposed to be a teenager and it just looks bad. Uh, you have your own issues with Ben Platt. You have your own issues with the writers. So hey, will you actually watch this? I probably will because my husband wants to see it. So we will most likely be watching it. I, I hate this show. It is no, so no, okay. problematic. So, so I I'm ready to go on a whole tirade, but like I haven't seen it yet because it just came out. So I, I, want, I, I want to say this to the people who are listening to this right now. I am a fan of, I, I hate Twitter. Despise Twitter with a passion, but I use it on a regular basis. On Twitter this week, actually it was last week because this is when this is coming out, last week, um, there was a meme that was going around that there was such a backlash to the trailer for Dear Evan Hansen because of the way oh, that they Ben made Platt, them de aged him. They CGI de aged him like they did it with Michael Douglas in Ant Man. And I burst it out laughing in the middle of my chemotherapy appointment when I saw that. So I can say I, 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 I'm looking forward to it just to see how bad a 35 year old guy looks as a 13 year old boy. I'm putting my predictions on it. Now you're going to like it. I like the music. I like two of their songs and that's it. But Eating I don't like the window. No, and you will be no, found. No. Nope, 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 nope. Shocked. Nope, I like the very first one, the opening number uh, where the mother sings to the son about, uh, you can't go to school high. <laughs> Great, so I won't go then. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's my favorite song of theirs. So it's the one that I have on repeat. Um, I want to also, now that we're talking about Broadway, we have mentioned this numerous, numerous times. And I can officially confirm for those people who are listening and watching, the Tony Awards are coming up Sunday, September 26th where they will be giving out the awards for the Tonys for the 2020 year. Wait, wait. The Tonys are literally this weekend? Sunday. This Sunday. What? What the fuck? I don't know what's happening in this world right now. So I... they, are, they are doing two things at the same time. The, uh, CBS is airing the Tonys on uh, for those for CBS if they want to sponsor this uh, podcast that'd be greatly appreciated at www.crossboardinterviews.ca. Um, for those who haven't know, uh, CBS is hosting a Welcome Back to Broadway show with Ben Platt as host. Oh. So uh, we are going to have the award ceremony and the Welcome Back to Broadway on sunday september 26th tune in tune in tune in because we will what i I forget what category but michael has it off the top of his head there is literally a category where only one person has been nominated Best best actor we're not sure who's gonna win though or not so we will see no he has to get 60 he has to get 60 percent of the votes to win that's what i mean can you imagine if he doesn't I kind of don't like Aaron to bite, which there's tea, but I can't spill it. So I really don't like Aaron's bite. So after these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, no. So the Tonys are coming up. I'm shocked that you didn't know this. I'm actually shocked that I just openly burst at your Tony bubble. Listen, the Tonys have been like, it's going to be this weekend for like three months. I'm... <laughs> oh, the Tonys. I'm shook. I'm a little shook. Shook to shook to shook. I'm just looking. Aaron Tavette, Moulin Rouge, the musical. Best performance by a leading actor in a musical. So we are officially going to find out who won the best Tonys for last year. <laughs> Yeah, for all three musicals of the four that could have been nominated. Yeah. Because they only gave three nominations. Speaking of Jagged Little Pill, speaking of Jagged Little Pill, Miss Elizabeth. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that we're talking about Tony's and we're talking about Jagged Little Pill? And this is why we this is why our episodes usually last fucking three hours because we go off in tangents. But Jagged Little Pill, Miss Alanis Morset, sat down with Crave TV and in Canada and I think HBO in the States and they produced a documentary on her life called Jagged Little Pill the untold the, the story of Alanis Morissette earlier this month she came out before it was supposed to air and she said this is not the documentary I signed up for so Alanis Morissette has basically thrown shade at the director that promised her that she would have creative cr- control over the last product that HBO screwed her over. So Alanis Morissette, I love you. We miss you. Come back to Canada because we just we, we just want to be BFFs with you if you want to come on the show as well. I saw her live this month. She was She's so good. She's yeah. so good. And don't talk about live shows in Canada yet because we don't have those yet. Sorry. I mean, I saw a video recording of her live. There you somewhere go. Somewhere in a basement. Um, what other movies have you been looking at this month or have you sort of not seen any so cinderella oh fuck yeah that's right i know it came out this month i would like to also forget that cinderella okay. happened but it happened and it was so fucking cringy and it was so fucking uncomfortable and there were so many weird choices made and i just want to know if we can make a movie musical without james corden in it so, speaking of James Corden making a movie musical without him in it, have you seen the latest reports a bit out of, of Wicked? Hollywood? Yeah. With Wicked, where he's going to be Dr. Dilliman. I'm already triggered. I'm triggered. I've never even seen the show and I'm freaking triggered. 
Why it okay. is what is Hollywood's fascination with James Corden? Can someone explain to me why everyone has to go to James Corden for any musical? Okay, we did carpool karaoke. That was funny for the first about 10. Then we did carpool karaoke where he wasn't in it yet again. Funny for the first two. Then we're doing sidewalk care, uh, sidewalk Broadways or red light Broadways or however you want to call it. Yet again, funny for two. What is Holly? What does James Corden have on every Hollywood producer that needs to have him in that show? He's producing or, them all. Is he really? Yeah, he produced. He was one of the producers for Cinderella. I believe he's one of the producers for Wicked. He has money now and he's producing things and casting himself in the role that he wants. Listen, money talks. Hi, Hollywood. I know. I'm going to say two words here and we're not going to have a technical difficulty here. People with money should not be throwing their money around. Last time someone started throwing their money around and they were producing movies, we saw how that ended for people. So let's smarten up Hollywood. Just because people have money doesn't mean that they have to be cast in everything. Just because they're producing something doesn't mean that they're good at acting. Stop well, the it. Person, Stop it. Stop it. The person producing it is also a person helping cast it and helping pick directors and so that if you have money it doesn't matter if you're holly like you're basically making the whole creative team because you're throwing your money around and you're basically dictating how you want it created so you take his money away if you don't want him in things hey i don't watch your show anymore i don't watch his youtube channel i i do not understand the fascination with james corden i i, I think I, I hollywood go ahead I think Hollywood misunderstood how excited we were with James Corden when he first came out uh, and really hit the US in a big way. Um, Cause I, I really liked him when I saw him in Doctor Who. And then he was in the 2014 Into the Woods and everyone's like, oh my God, he was so great, we love him. And then Hollywood heard that and said, great, we'll put him in everything for the next like 10 years, five years, six years, whatever. And now they just, can't stop. Now they've stopped. They've created a monster, and I don't know where sure it has. But Hollywood, James Corden is not your friend. Please stop. That's why Britain got rid of him. <laughs> There's a reason why Britain, James Corden is not on British television anymore. <sighs> so let's talk about the movies that are coming out in October now. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, no. I also saw *Malignant*, which came out in September. It was a spooky movie. It wasn't scary. It was kind of, it was, it was What's kind it of a choice. This woman, she, God, how do I explain this fucked up plot without giving away any spoilers? This woman, Hi everyone, for those who are about to tune in or who are listening, who really want to watch this really screwed up movie that uh, he's about to spoil because honestly, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not a scary movie fan. Please turn off for the next 10 seconds or 15 seconds, actually. Actually, let's say 10 because I'm assuming he could do it in 10 seconds. Let's go. You're really, you're really giving me a lot of, uh, of praise. Um, let me try 10 seconds. Da, da, okay, da, da, okay. Stars. Don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off. Turn it off now. So this woman is being haunted by basically a alien parasite that's living on her back that is controlling her and controlling the way that she uh and killing people that are in the past and like that's the, the movie but you don't know it's there yeah uh-huh that's <laughs> that's the journey and it's scary but it's not for those who are listening hopefully you can turn on now but hopefully you're not stopping so i'm just going to keep on talking for another few seconds just to make sure and welcome back um fyi plot of a doctor who episode <laughs> yeah Anyway, um, <laughs> it's bad. Okay, well, go watch it. Don't watch it. Do whatever you need to do. So, movies that are coming up now. I'm ready for it. 
in October. Halloween Kills. Jamie Lee Curtis. Kick of the can. Paranormal Activity because it's Halloween and it's October. Pass. Dune. Let's give it a shot. The one that I am actually overly excited to watch. Venom 2. Let there be <gasps> Very excited. Bear City 4. No, you're lying to me. Yeah. That was a trilogy. Maybe they're coming out with a fourth one because, you know... Get they're them. not. I know the producers. I've met the producers. They don't have money for a fourth one. Ask James Gordon. He'll star in it. <laughs> Stop! Only if it's a musical. Bear City 4, the musical. The bear I can't. <laughs> Um, I, I, I looked at the list. There's not much coming out in October. Yet again, this is usually the Oscar uh, movies start coming out in November and uh, December. So October is usually a slow month for the Halloween stuff. This is usually when Saw, Paranormal Activity, Halloween, Friday the 13th come out. But we only have Paranormal Activity and Halloween Kills this year. I know I will be re-watching Hocus Pocus, so... And there's a second one of those coming out, right? Next year. Next year. Okay. With, I believe, the entire original cast. Yes. Yes. Very yes, excited. Because, yes. Um, so with that, we've talked movies. We've talked Tonys. We've talked Met Gala. Let's talk music. Any, any, any music that came out this month that you were shocked at or you were happy to hear? So, we already talked about how you are not as in love with Lil Nas X as I am. His new album is kind of fire. So I really like the new album. And it's called Baby, right? No, it's called Montero, which is his government name. What? So, Lil Nas X is his, I almost spilled my cup. Ooh, that would have been bad. You, you, almost uh, spilled the tea. you almost spilled the tea? Oh. No, I'm spilling the tea now. Uh, Lil Nas X is his stage name. Montero is his government name. That is his like name given at birth to him, his government name. Okay. Well, and that was the only one that you saw that you sort of picked up on? Well, I was going to listen to Casey Musgrave's album, but you weren't as impressed with it. I'm not a big, she is a wannabe uh, Taylor Swift, and I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan. And I didn't like Gaga's Chromatica remix. Like, just, I've not been super, this is going to get me killed by the gay men. I've not been super impressed by Lady Gaga for a little while. And I think this remix was just like, oh, you loved Chromatica? I haven't written anything new, but here's some remixes for you. Like, it was kind of, I don't know, just wasn't my vibe. And then uh, Drake released, Canadian superstar Drake released a new album. Trying to suck up for the Jim Carrey pissed off people. <laughs> no, I actually really like Drake. I think he's fantastic. I have not heard this album yet. I've been streaming Montero way too much and was busy at the beginning of this month, but it is on my list of ones I want to listen to because I do love pretty much everything he's put out. So I'm excited, I'm excited. That's the music that I noticed. A lot of a lot of albums came out. ABBA released music. Oh my god, how did we forget? Because I didn't pay attention. <gasps> ABBA released two, three new songs, two new songs, and, and living for it. The first one I was. They released a song, and it basically was this like the whole, literally the whole message of the song was we're back and we're not the same ABBA you knew, we've changed. And it literally was the same exact sound that they did in the seventies. <laughs> and then the, the second song was not as fun as the first one. Cause the first one was like, oh, I'm back in the disco. I'm having a good time. The second one was a little funky. It was still good. I'm excited for their album now. Yay, ABBA, just what we needed. Another throwback to the seventies. We needed more ABBA, and I will not take that slander. Thank you. Okay, so I will move on. Move on from music. Last but not the second last, actually, because the last one I, I'm going to throw Michael for a loop on the last uh, comment. I know what you're going to talk about. 
I think you don't, but we'll see. Um, so let's talk about TV for a second. We talked about this at the beginning of last season, but we are now at the la- in August. We talked about the season finale of RuPaul's All Star Drag Race Six. Miss Kylie Sonique was the declared winner. Yes, Michael was right. I was wrong. Oh God, hold it against me. Um, that was now, a Lady Gaga song. Now, now. Um, RuPaul has made up for her transphobic ways and has given it to a trans uh, contestant. There you go. Congratulations. Sure. I think that's what, I think that's what RuPaul wants you to think. Um. (laughs) Well, well, (laughs) while she goes back and goes fracking to her uh, million dollar Wyoming and Montana. That's problematic. Um, No, I was really happy Sonique won. I'm not gonna lie. I was rooting for her once my girl Trinity K. Lone went home. I Mm -hmm. think Sonique was robbed many times of winning in order for producers to favor Ginger Minj, and it was super apparent. So seeing Sonique win was amazing. Speaking of fucking uh, music, Ginger Minj's new album dropped. She wrote an album? Yeah, it's actually really good. I don't know what it's called. I just listened to one song and I tuned it out, but it was good for those like 30 seconds. It was good, but you tuned it out. Got it. Yeah. And now, you know those music that you put on the background? It's a good background music. Ginger Minch, congratulations. You've made it to Chris Brown's background music. You've made it an elevator music song. <laughs> I don't know. It's about Wizard of Oz. So there you go. Anyway, Ginger Minch, she was the favorite to win, but Kylie Sonique basically came out and... She was After whose we- favorite to win? I think it was the producer's favorite to win was Ginger Yes. Ben. Because all the fan polls had Sonique, Kylie Sonique as like 60% win. My girl, my Susan Lucci of the year has got robbed once again. Eureka did not deserve to win. I agree. Uh, Who was the, was that the one you wanted to win? Eureka, yeah. Oh. Robbed. Hmm. Bitch went home. She went home. Anyway. Anyway. So, talking about TV, talking about RuPaul's Drag Race, we are back on Monday with RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 3 with our first... No, that's this week, I thought. That's literally Monday. The 27th, girl. Not the 23rd? Am I literally drinking right now? I'm so confused with everything going on in my life. I'm literally... It's the 27th? Was I right? No, it's the, literally the 23rd. <gasps> oh, we don't get it till a few days later, we Canadians. Oh. Yeah, so that's, I'm looking at Canadian numbers, sorry. Girl, borrow it and then return it. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so this is the very first season of RuPaul's Anywhere where there will be a cisgender woman on the show. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I think it was time. I mean, I'm curious to see how well she does. Um, There's been some rumors circulating that she doesn't make it very far, but who knows? Because half the time the rumors are very wrong. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, so for those who don't know, for those who might have seen it on the 23rd, when this is coming, after this comes out, um, Victoria's, Victoria Scone, or her real name is Emily Dapierre, uh, she is female, born female, and she is a first contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race, that is identified as a female at birth, well, that was female at birth. AFAB. Uh, yeah i'm curious to see how well she does i think that um it was time i mean there's been um uh, afab uh drag performers for years now that are cisgender women that are drag queens not drag kings and so it was time i mean rupaul was the only one who was dragging their feet i'm sure that the toxicity in the fan base is going to have a field day with this one but i'm excited um 
for those who aren't know, uh, don't know, who haven't been paying attention as well, it was also announced this month that a second season of RuPaul's Down Under is going to be in production here soon. Yep. Uh, My- Michael and I have disagreeing opinions on how well we liked it. Actually, I think we're both in the agreement that it was really bad. It was Um, terrible. Yeah, so hopefully they can redeem themselves for this season, but who knows, and we will see. Uh, Maybe RuPaul and Michelle Visage wants to go down to Australia again. That's about it. They want to go down under. Um, Canada Drag Race comes out this month, too. October. Oh, is it October? Uh, Sure. I'm making you question all your dates. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Like, listen cancer brain here and you're making me question all my dates thanks thanks yeah that's right uh october 14th is the first day thanksgiving thanksgiving day uh thanksgiving weekend is uh the first uh rupaul's drag race oh yeah y'all do thanksgiving in october yeah we're smart (laughs) we're we're not george bush who used to do it in october then you guys moved it because we're like i'm all special i'm wait really george bush Thank you, President, for a lot of things, but you can thank him for moving uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, so cool. <laughs> last but not least, any other TV shows you want to talk about before we talk about the last subject and we wrap up here? Yeah, a lot of stuff came out this month. Um, American Crime Story, the Bill Clinton impeachment came out. I have yep. yet to see an episode. I am swamped with how much TV is out and I have very little time starting a brand new job and being busy on weekends and on new house things and blah, 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 blah. So it's on my list. It's being recorded. It's in my DVR. American Horror Story came out though, which I have seen and it's very enjoyable. Um, I love the new additions. I love that Adina Porter is back. She is one of the best actresses out there and I will fight anyone who disagrees. Um, kind go. of on... <laughs> rude kind of on that uh same reality show kick uh the circle came back i am sucked in i am so ready i don't know who's gonna win because this show constantly changes it up on me because someone could be in first place the entire time and then get last place at the very end such a great it's on netflix if you have not seen it the premise looks stupid it looks terrible i went went in going this will be good for whatever it's pandemic i have nothing else to do I'm hooked. You're, like it is so fun. Are you gooped? Are you? I'm gooped, gooped gagged, plucked, and pressed over it. Um, and then I, another, I was all excited because I just learned the word goop this week. So I was just I was trying to use that in a sentence. Oh, I love it. I love that word. It's a great word. It's goop. Um, <laughs> also, we had Big Brother season twenty three in the U.S. is going to have its very first black winner ever in twenty three seasons. Um, six black members of the house got together and formed the cookout, which was basically a, an a lot, a secret alliance to ensure that, uh, there was a, that was only black people in the finale because a black person has never won and they were successful. It is only the only remaining people in the house are black. And it was this alliance that they formed and it was some of the best game playing ever. It's going to be a really groundbreaking moment. Um, I'm not a big brother fan and I've been following this so closely because it's just the way they're playing the game has never been played before. And it's kind of brilliant the way that they've been manipulating people and the way that this alliance formed and like, it's, it was, it's fascinating. Um, other things, rude, other things that came out, a lot of came out this week or this, this month morning show came back. Season two, I have watched the first episode. I was, uh, I, I was, haven't uh, yet. I was anticipating not to enjoy myself, but I actually did enjoy it. Uh, Ooh. I was, I was back and forth for a while, but I did enjoy it at the end of the day. Good to know. Uh, we also got Sex Ed season three on Netflix. Have you not seen that one? I watched the first episode and I hated it. Oh, I really like it. I can't wait to watch season three again. It came out this past weekend. I have had zero time. <laughs> the little bit of time I had, I watched Everybody's Talking About Jamie. 
and sat down with me at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> yes. Um, and then finally, Lula Rich, the documentary about American MLM pyramid scheme, Lula Row, uh, came out on Amazon Prime. Uh, I don't, I don't, do you remember that giant craze? You, you, we Lula talked Rowe about it. We talked about it at the beginning of this week, and then I realized I didn't know much about it, but then I looked into it, and I was like, oh, I do actually remember this. This documentary was very, like, tell all -y. Like, they gave us every bit of information I didn't think I wanted about LuLaRoe. It's the way the world works. It was so good. It was shocking. And then the people they got were like, I'm just going to tell everything. And they were all... Like they were asking, well, how much were your bonuses? They're like, oh, I was getting like 50,000 a month for a few months. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And then one moment they asked her and she's like, I don't actually feel comfortable discussing that. Cause she was like one of the first people at the top. So she was probably getting, cause they were even showing the numbers. They were like a few people were getting like a million a month for two years. So she was probably getting close to that. Yeah. Um, okay, so movies were good, music was good this month, T uh, TV was good this month, uh, Matt Gala was good this month, Tony's are going to be shitty this month, but we got to leave on this topic. Okay, what do you, what do you think it is? Are we about to talk about Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend in Trinidad? Damn right! <laughs> I knew... Hold on, we need a light on for this. I'm getting fuzzy because it's getting late, but this is a good conversation. Where's my light switch? <laughs> well, let's all go to the Ooh. movies. Let's all go to the movies. So, what are you talking Nikki, about? I needed a light to talk about I, Nicki Minaj's cousin. Nicki Minaj's cousin's best friend in Trinidad's balls. Exactly. Nicki Minaj, God bless her. Uh, during the Met Gala, she, I think she put out a tweet that she was not yeah. attending the Met Gala because they the COVID protocols and she was she's basically come out and said that she's basically an anti-vaxxer. She's not an anti-vaxxer. She, she is waiting to get this one because her cousin's best friend in Trinidad's balls became enlarged. Inflamed. Inflamed, sorry. So there, there are international incidents and then there are- <laughs> This is one of them. This is what, one of them. What the hell is this? So the president of Trinidad and Tobago had to come out in a press conference because of this tweet and say, we could not find this person. This is not the case. The vaccines are safe. The president of the United States press secretary in the middle of a press briefing where we have COVID-19, <laughs> we have Russia, we have China, we have nuclear submarines in Australia has to literally answer a question from a mainstream media and say, we have reached out to Nicki Minaj's team <laughs> to let Dr. Anthony Fauci sit down with her and tell her the truth about the vaccines. I'm not Nicki Minaj's best cousin's best friend in Trinidad. What the? <laughs> I'm sorry. This story, when I was seeing it happen live, I was like, what is going on in this world right now? And <laughs> Why, Nikki? What, what, what is going on? What is going on with her world when a celebrity like Nikki Minaj can cause an international crisis over inflamed balls? Uh, listen, it's a, it's, 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 it's. And the thing is that. This is where it gets this, this. This is where it gets me. Tucker Carlson, Tucker freaking Carlson on Fox News said the left is going crazy because Nicki Minaj is finally speaking the truth, and the people of America won't hold it. 
because Nicki Minaj is not buying into the narrative of the crazy left wings and her cousin's best friend's balls are inflamed. Minaj's cousin's best friend in Trinidad. That was my fate. That was on my 2021 bingo card. In case anyone is con- con- wants to know, it was on mine. What the fuck, people? What the honest to God fuck is wrong with our society? When Nicki Minaj's best friend's cousin, cousin's best friend, no, cousin's best friend from Trinidad, from Trinidad, who you cannot reach for comment, can cause almost six days worth of news coverage in America. Well, also like well, all these people were saying, like Nicki Minaj is an anti-vaxxer, and then she went on her Twitter. She's like, No, I'm not. I think everyone should get this vaccine. They got to do what's right for them. I'm just saying I'm waiting because I, there's da, 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 my because cousin, my, my cousin's, cousin's best, friend, best in friend in Trinidad. And it has, never was like this person I know. It was every single tweet was like my cousin's best friend in Trinidad. My cousin's best friend in Trinidad. I'm like, girl, we get who it is. You don't need to keep saying it. You are wasting tweet characters here. There are days when I weep for society and then there's days like that that I think to myself, this is why we are in the stupid pandemic for 19 months because we have celebrities who are coming out and saying, my cousin's best friend in Trinidad is got inflamed balls because he got the vaccine. (sighs) You can not make this shit up. I don't know what to say. I weep, I weep, I weep for society. I'm ready for the ride. Like, I want to know what's the next crazy thing that's going to come out of a celebrity's mouth. This was a this 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 probably like did harm. This 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 has set back so much progress that Americans had around vaccinations, because I, I I'm not. I, it's I don't just get, like I, I don't want to get. All you can do is laugh because yeah. if you don't, it's like I'm just gonna cry. Like it's just like girl. But here's the thing. The Here here's the thing. People believe this stuff. People like Nicki Minaj know that if she tweets something so stupid, so ridiculous, people are going to believe it. There are people in America right now going around saying, I guarantee it, even in Canada, saying, I'm not getting the vaccine anymore because I read on Twitter that Nicki Minaj's cousin's best friend from Trinidad got the vaccine and got inflamed balls. I mean, it honestly would have probably been better if she had come out and said they had a vaccine mandate. I'm not vaccinated because I have a distrust of the medical industry because Black people were frequently used as test subjects for new vaccines, new medicines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think people would be like, okay, I get that. But like, if this is the reason, girl. Nick. I think I honestly believe Nicki Minaj has done more harm to the American people in the last month, in the last month, than this vaccine will ever do to the people of America. That's probably factual. It, uh, the, it was. And of course the media ran with it. And I mean, of course we saw it everywhere in articles being written about Nicki Minaj worried about her, te- her testicles. And then she's tweeting, no, I'm not. I'm just saying more research and I don't have to, th- it's like, girl, you are feeding into this. Like, are, do you have an album coming out? Like, what is, are you looking for press? Like, what is going on? Please tell me her next album is gonna be called Inflame Balls. 
I want her next album to be called My Cousin's Best Friend in Trinidad. That's how I would actually like to be greeted always now. Okay, so in, in the October rundown, I will say welcome back to the Crossboard Interview Podcast. With us today is my cousin's best friends in Flames Balls Entertainment Pundit. No, <laughs> my Nicholas. cousin's best friend in Trinidad. My best friend in my best friend, my cousin's best friend in Trinidad's in Flame Balls, Mr. Michael Nichols Payne, our entertainment. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um I will scream if you do it. I will laugh so hard. Okay, it's it's on the record. He's going to scream. Um, with that, um, well, it's a Halloween episode too, so it's going to be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Um, so with that, we are two hours into this. Michael Nichols Pate. For those who are listening, check out his Instagram at the show notes below follow him he has great content he has great uh, instagram stories where you can find out who his he can uh randomly uh say two words that i don't want to get sued for so boot and um so check them out because he has all the fashion industries met gala up there well he did um but anyway without further ado, yeah uh, drag everything you never know what you're gonna get yeah, Michael Nichols Pate. Thank you so much from uh, from my best friends, my cousin's best friend in Trinidad, uh, in Brown ah. Balls, to your cousin's best friend in Tobago's Balls. Have yourself an excellent day. Enjoy your weekend, and we will be back on Monday with another great episode of the Crossboard Interview Podcast. Have yourself an excellent day. Talk to you later, Mike. Cool. Bye.